everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Johnny Maloney and Austin Yurski. Uh We are going to talk about some stuff uh, this week, as we usually do every week. We always talk about some stuff. Uh, Austin, um, something happened that you were, like, dying to tell me about, but you only wanted to tell me about on the air. So I, I do. I, I don't know how funny your reaction will be over audio, but okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a um, link in the chat. All right. This is great for radio. You might want to turn down, turn down your volume, but... Uh, okay. Turn down for what? Oh, God. Shut up, Johnny. <laughs> this sick beat? Oh, my I'm, gosh. I'm sorry. I'm stuck in last week's episode. Like I said, I've been preoccupied. Uh, I'm not getting anything. Nothing's coming up. You didn't... Johnny, did the, the YouTube link in the chat work for you? It works for uh, me? It's, it's working just fine, and... Uh, oh, wait, wait. It said that an error occurred, and I yeah. to try again later. Ah, you guys. Hang on, I'm going to try again now that it's later. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there he goes. Shake it like you mean it, Jaws. You can... <laughs> I, I see nothing. This is the worst thing we've done. <laughs> you should try again now, because I... it's later. Oh, it's later, you're right. Here, here, let me, uh... Here, uh, I'll stop uh... watching it so I can free up some of that internet for you. <laughs> <laughs> we always cut this down. Technical difficulties part. As a quick aside, did you guys hear about Tom Wheeler performing, like, the biggest 180 turn on a dime that any man named Wheeler has ever performed in his life? No. Yeah, Tom Wheeler, head of the FCC, was all like, guess what, bitches? I'm going to propose that the internet become a common carrier. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that. I just didn't remember that guy's name. So that was, those were a bunch of sharks. <laughs> Uh, dancing with Katy Perry. I see that clip. Uh, yeah, they, but did you, did you not see the majesty, the 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 the, the, the saintliness, the beneficence, the <laughs> revelation that is left shark? <laughs> he didn't really seem to be into it. He was like, he was kind of like, eh, I'm not gonna even try to mimic what Katy Perry <laughs> is doing. It's like I'm a shark. That's my thing. <laughs> Le- left shark is a maverick. He does what he wants. He makes yeah. his own rules. For a second um, there, I thought that Left Shark was busting a Macarena. <laughs> I won't bore you guys by talking about the actual Super Bowl, because I'm pretty sure I'm the only football fan, not only on this show, but who even is aware of this show. <laughs> I heard that some guy got punched. There was a fight at the end when the Seahawks blew it, and what some people are calling the worst uh, play-calling decision in football history, I don't think so. But uh, What happened? The, I, I only know about is, is, is a punch. I don't know about the play, the call. Yeah, somebody, they were. Somebody threw a ball, and then a guy failed to catch it within mm-hmm. the confines of the rules. They were on like the one yard line, and they all they had to do was give it to Marshawn Lynch, who's one of the best players in the league, and he would have easily scored, and they would have won. But instead, they threw it, and the Patriots intercepted it to win the game. At which point, a fight immediately broke out, and like it became a brawl. See, it ain't so, Austin, that actual aggression broke out in an, a sports analog for actual aggression? You ever see the um, George Carlin skit on football? Probably. No, I've seen a lot of George Carlin stuff. I, I highly recommend you, when this is over, you just, like, YouTube George Carlin football or something. He has, it's basically, he talks about how it's a perfect metaphor, the, like, why Americans love it so much is it's a perfect metaphor for war, because you're trying to, like, um, you know, you have a ground game and a, a sustained aerial assault where you're trying to take other people's land, and you're, it's just, it's great. He's, he's very clever. I like him. <laughs> I'm not the first person to say that. Obviously. Oh, oh, oh! George Carlin is like a smart comedian. You say? I know we're breaking ground here at Word Funk, right? Okay. You heard it here first. I hear one time he also said shit. <laughs> he did. He Damn. Said a bunch of them. Um, okay. The left shark guys. That's the thing. Yeah. Buzzfeed wrote like 18 articles on it within an hour, like of it <laughs> happening. It's... The sad thing is, is that poor Left Shark can't actually like come out and confess that he was Left Shark, because yeah. as a as a masked Avenger, his identity is something of legend and something like, oh my God, Left Shark is awesome. But the moment that some guy is like, I am Left Shark, you're either gonna get this Spartacus situation where other people is like, no, I am Left Shark, I am Left Shark, I am Left Shark, or you're gonna get people that are like, what the fuck were you thinking? Yeah. Now, I saw Super Bowl. You don't shit on religion. <laughs> yeah, I saw someone say like, "Oh, that person's career is ruined because they messed up on the biggest stage in the world or whatever." But I'm like, 
he's like world famous now. Like, there's no way that that isn't opening doors. As you know, what I'm saying, like, I don't watch American or Canadian Idol or any of that shit because there's no such thing as Canadian Idol anymore. Because we gave it up, we got bored of it. Um, but like, if Left Shark appeared on American Idol, I might be moved to watch it. Or Dancing <laughs> with Stars. Being Le- Left Shark is probably almost exactly like being one of the members of SEAL Team Six. You just, just, just the greatest heroes that we don't know who they are. It, well, didn't one of the SEAL Team guys write a book? Oh yeah, that guy. Uh, he pretty, pretty much blew it. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, Have you? No. Yeah. So I mean, there's not much to say. It was a funny thing that happened, and that's this has been a slow week, guys. Yeah, but. Um. well, well, we have uh, something uh, that's kind of nerdy and kind of cool that's coming uh, down the uh, the pike. Is that the way the, the phrase I'm going for? I don't care. No, no, it's it's the pipe. You don't want anything coming down the pike. If something comes down the pike, you should probably get a shovel and put it somewhere else. Ah, okay. Well, it's coming down something, and it's uh, it's basically the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, is dominating the box office. And then it went to television with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter, and the ratings are allegedly good. So now they're like, Internet, and then they did it. And so on Netflix, very, very soon, we are getting Daredevil. Uh, not the Ben Affleck uh, Daredevil. He is uh, too busy being another superhero right now. We have instead uh, the guy who starred in Stardust, uh, playing uh, Matt Murdock, uh, aka Dare- Daredevil. The trip- he was also he was also in Boardwalk Empire. Oh, okay, well, yeah, okay, but that's- spoilers. He gets killed. Yeah, but that's less funny than saying he's in Stardust. So. Spoilers: Everybody in Boardwalk Empire gets killed. <laughs> oh, now I don't have to watch it. Um, so so anyway, uh, basically the trailer hit. Or the, I guess they're calling it a teaser trailer. If you're a minute and a half long, it's not really a teaser. You you showed me a lot of the, the show. Uh, basically, Daredevil is wearing almost entirely black. He's basically the, the Dread Pirate Roberts uh, instead of Daredevil. He's he, he doesn't look like Daredevil at all. And I'm fine. As, with as that. I understand it, as I understand it, the costume is actually based on Frank Miller's run at Daredevil. Yeah, but d- even even getting a closer look at it, it doesn't even look like it has D's on it. Where is his D's? <laughs> Wait, needs way more D's. Give I it a D. Like, I feel like it needs at least two. Um, so I'll give it one. Johnny, you want to give it the other D? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll give it. I'll give it a D. Okay. The, the okay. Thing, a big, so hard D. The trailer is. Um, it's, <laughs> Leon, just ignored us. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't care what you guys are saying anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead with this thing. Um, the trailer is light on action and heavy on Catholicism. Uh, that's, that's what you want out of your superheroes. You want your superheroes to just feel guilty about everything all the time. That's that's basically it. I don't understand why uh, Daredevil's arch nemesis isn't like a really overbearing nun, just like a teacher with just a giant ruler. Instead, it's like Kingpin. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Are you guys actually excited for Daredevil? I'm pretty burned out on superheroes. I the thing is, I I just watched the Daredevil trailer right after watching the new Agent Carter. So, yeah, maybe I do feel like I'm watching too many superheroes, but so long as they keep being good, I'm okay with it. The problem is um, <laughs> this Marvel, look good. <laughs> Marvel's superhero movies are usually pretty good, pretty good to great. Sometimes they're just okay, but usually they're not shit is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so that's good. Um, their television has been more spotty. Uh, Agent Carter is – Pretty good. It has good characters. It's it's interesting. But man, does it look like a TV show. You know, it just looks like any late 90s TV show. It's just shot in very mundane kind of way. It just, I guess I'm spoiled at this point where I want everything to look, ha- to have like a better look to it, better cinematography, just something that looks a little more, I, I don't want it to look cheap. And, and it just seems like, Marvel should be able to make a television show that doesn't look cheap, but both Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter, they just look like late 90s TV shows instead of what we have now, which are like movie quality TV shows at at, at the risk of making that sound a little silly. Do either of you guys watch either show? I I gave Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. a a try. I watched one and a half episodes. (laughs) That's, That's good enough. How, and I was like, no, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't do any of them. I couldn't do Arrow. I couldn't do Flash. I couldn't do Gotham. I couldn't do any of the agents. I, I can't do superhero TV, guys. None of, none of the new ones. I, I, I was able to do Smallville when it came out. Uh, I tried to do the Flash, but as as Clickhole, I think, uh, perfectly expressed my feelings a couple of days ago, is that my problem with the Flash is that the Flash has to go faster. <laughs> so the arrow apparently. Gets- there are scenes where he doesn't even move at all; he just talks, and I'm like, "This isn't the Flash." <laughs> arrow apparently gets really good. I watched the first few episodes. And then I just got sidetracked, and I haven't gotten around to it. And I think Arrow and Flash are just going to have to be shows that I watch years from now when I'm bored. Because they're, 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 there's, like, three seasons of Arrow, and that's, like, a long slog for me to just sit down and binge watch something. Because I just don't have that kind of time. And yeah, I get 50 hours in before it gets good. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I... And I and I, I don't want to watch The Flash, because that's basically a spinoff of Arrow. I, I, I want to watch Arrow before I see The Flash, which means I can't watch The Flash right now, and Gotham just sucks. <laughs> so, so, so I, I mean, Agent Carter is pretty good. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has finally got me interested. But, yeah, there has yet to be, like, a really great superhero TV show in the last few years, unless you count Arrow, but again, it, it starts off so slow that it just didn't grab me. Aren't you forgetting the cape? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, the cape. Um, I am forgetting the cape, because I decided not to watch it, and then I was right to do that. Um, so, I mean, Daredevil, is Daredevil going to really be the one that breaks out? Because I just feel like, it might be. It might be. In the first place, Netflix seems to know what it's doing. Like, uh, you know, their their original series are pretty damn good for the most Guys, part. I'm yeah. so excited about House of Cards coming back. Oh, gosh. House of know. Cards, um, Orange is the New Black, you know. Oh, they, Jack Horseman. Yeah, <laughs> they, they bought up the rights, of course, to, I, like, I haven't watched it, but I heard really good things about The Killing towards the end of its TV run. All right. Um, uh, you know, what, what, God, what else? Um, there's a couple ones I haven't seen that have got flagged on my list. I, like, tried, uh, watching, I tried watching uh, Marco Polo, which was their attempt to be Game of Thrones. It sucked. Okay, so there we go. That's that's one bad one. And you, but you can see from the trailer, from the the Daredevil trailer, that it does at least seem to affect a slightly more cinematic feel. Yes, I'll agree with that. It l- doesn't look like it's a TV show from like right around the turn of the century. That that last little scene where he's like lifting his head out of the puddle and you see that like blood dripping from his mouth. I'm like, yeah. ooh, that just that that tickled my cinema balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, okay. So, yeah, I guess when you put it like that, there I do have a little bit of hope for this, but, I mean, I, I do I do like that we're getting all the episodes all at once, so I don't have to, so I can kind of watch it, and hopefully it'll just be a, like, an ongoing uh, story for the whole thing and not, like, Monster of the Week stuff. I've got to be honest, I do have to be honest that I've, um, one of the reasons why I'm optimistic about the Daredevil Netflix series is very recently I flipped past a channel for a brief second that had the Ben Affleck Daredevil on it. It was and it was like literally I, all I needed was a few seconds. <laughs> I'm like what? Oh, click! And it was like you know suddenly I felt like my palate was refreshed. Okay. I was like I suddenly appreciated the era in which we live for um, motion picture superhero adaptations. Okay. Um, why, why you hating on my boy Affleck? <laughs> I'm, not hate, I'm not hating on Affleck. I'm not hating on Affleck at all. Uh-huh. I, got, I got no problem with 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 Benny Boy. <laughs> That's um, what everyone calls him. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he's an infinitely more talented director than he is actor. Um, I mean, and I mean, he's got another chance coming up to be the Dark Knight. My parents are dead. And that's Although not confusing. I, I really, no, I really do hope, I really, really do hope that, that when he does his Batman voice, that there's a little bit of Boston in there. You know what I hope for the Batman I think, voice? I think that'd be, that'd be really fantastic. Uh, what I hope for great. the Batman voice is that he doesn't do a Batman voice. I just want him to talk like Ben Affleck. Like, he has, uh, uh, there's, like, absolutely no difference between how Ben Affleck talks in every other I'm, movie. I'm Batman. 
Yeah, he's just, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm Batman. Ooh, <laughs> scary. <laughs> I would really love for, for uh, in fact, I know this is stupid, but I would like to see ni- 90s Ben Affleck walk in, just have the Batman a- a- outfit on and have him just be sort of, like, nonchalant and sarcastic and just kind of walk in and, like, Ben Affleck, yeah, Batman, yeah, I know, yeah. Right. Like, green, green screen him into the back of some Kevin Smith movies or something yeah. like that? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> oh, you guys. Yeah. Uh, they should have just got Casey Affleck. He's the one who can act better. That's just how I feel. That gone, baby, gone? Yeah. I, yeah. The thing is, I mean, people keep saying, like, Ben Affleck is a really good aff... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting my... He's a, he's a great Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they keep saying he's a great afro. I was like, I've seen better afros, honestly. Ben Affleck is, you know, Ben Affleck is a pretty good Affleck. He's not the best Affleck, but I'd say he's definitely a serviceable Affleck. He's, the thing is, people have been saying that uh, for the past few years. They say, you know, Ben Affleck, he's a really good actor now. It's like, no, he's not. He's, he's just fine now. You're, 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 it's like... When a dog learns how to walk on two legs for a few seconds, it's like, yeah, that's pretty impressive for a dog, but you're <laughs> falling. Are you he, calling Ben Affleck a trained animal? He, he He's getting better, and that's great, but I still feel like he's just passable. He's, he's no Charlie Sheen. <laughs> he's not, he's, he's a complete... He, He's, he's no Emilio Estevez, is he's, what Leon is trying to say. He's gone from being shit to being average. He's and, definitely no Steve Gutenberg. I feel I think it's I feel like it's an issue where like Ben Affleck stopped being completely shit and then like a really understanding teacher pinned a best improved medal on him and we're like supposed to think he's an Oscar contender now. I like to I like this to take a step back and think about Leon and me and Johnny just random nerds being like, yeah, this multi millionaire famous <laughs> actor, he's okay, he's competent, we'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Ben Affleck is is really really uh, interested in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, he's accomplished more than all three of us have will in our entire lives combined. Oh, yeah. But you know, he has our seal of approval. That's what yeah. matters. Behind yeah. the scenes, you know, he he writes and he directs and he's really good at that. I just would like to see him do that almost exclusively instead of the thing that he does he's okay at i mean i'm i'm pretty good at like a few things i'm only okay at cooking so i don't do it that much i i I don't like burst into like my bedroom and say like hon from now on i'm doing all the cooking you're much better at it than i am but i'm just going to because i want to be the star that wouldn't fly. So you just, he's just okay. I, 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 the thing is, is that, like, I mean, in, whoa, what just happened there? Sorry. Can what? you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry. It's, I, I just blacked out for a second. All right. <laughs> and I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure Wait, for how long. All that, right. Does that mean Skype blacked out, or did you just have, like, a fit? It doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think it might, but okay. <laughs> no, no, don't you guys worry. If it's if it's the latter, then you know Skype's okay. It'll work itself out. If it's the former, I live in Canada. We have free health care. Uh, worry about it when I start talking in tongues. Anyway, the thing is, is that we like like I can understand honestly. In in defense of Ben Affleck as an actor at this point in time, we really have no idea whether or not he puts asses in seats, and maybe he does put asses in seats, and maybe that's why he gets paid. But the thing is, is that I feel like, you know, if I was only passable at something, but it paid me, like, tons of money to do something, uh, like, that, that that I could use to do something that I was passionate about and that I was good about, oh, fuck yeah. I would be, I would be up on that stage, left, shark, left sharking my ass off, like, you know, five days a week, so I could take two days out of that week to do something that meant something to me. Yeah, I... Can we all- can I we all just to... admit? Can we all admit that we would all sell out in an instant? <laughs> no, no, I absolutely would. And I'm not even uh, mocking Ben Affleck when I say that he's he's only an okay actor, and I'd like to just see him do behind the scenes work. 
I'm, Unless I, you've I, seen Paycheck. If you've seen Paycheck, then he's actually not really that good. They, they, but let's not count that one. No, it's, I'm, I'm not saying that he should, like, if someone said, hey, be Batman, I'm not mad at him for saying sure, because that sounds awesome. I'm. Re- it's really more the uh, movie-going fan base that thinks he's really good now, when I think if you just look at his range and look at his emoting, he's just passable now. He's, I, I just, I don't... I didn't realize we all had such strong opinions on Ben Affleck. <laughs> We have the strongest opinions on Ben Affleck. And the funny thing the is, I'm pretty sure if we if we had had this conversation about Tom Cruise, <laughs> we would probably have had the same conversation, except every time we've said Ben Affleck, we would just have said Tom Cruise. I think Tom Cruise is a better actor than Ben Affleck, even though I don't think Tom Cruise has very much range. Or at least, yeah. or, let, me, let me rephrase that. I don't think he shows much range because he always tries to pick the same roles. He did play a very different role in Magnolia, and he did it very well. That was That's probably my favorite Tom Cruise movie, even though he's not really the star. What about Legend? <laughs> he was, I, that's pretty different, but that was early on when he was just like, yeah, sure, I'll be in Ridley Scott's next movie. I'll be an elf thing. <laughs> oh, I love Legend. That movie is so fucking stupid. I haven't great. seen that in a long time. I really oh, should have. Oh. Just, Tim Curry. Just, just to hear Tim Curry go, I'm the devil. Ugh. I'm sorry. I can't do Tim Curry. I don't know why I even tried. I don't know why anybody tries to do Tim Curry. I mean, except for Tim Curry's lover. Yeah. Then I could understand why they would try to do Tim Curry. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> all right, do we have anything more we want to say? What were we even talking about? We had I don't think Daredevil. Daredevil. Uh, yeah, Daredevil. We're talking about <laughs> We didn't have anything to say. We just kept talking. That's not the same thing. No, no, it's not at all. I I don't even know what we're doing anymore. Um, there is a there's another topic we wanted to do, um, and uh, it's it's by far the most important topic we've <laughs> done because it's time for us to get super political, guys. Uh, you want to take it, uh, Johnny? I think this is uh, your your spearheading this one. I, I gotta you know I gotta apologize for for bringing the hammer down because this is gonna get pretty somber here. Um, this is a story about the disenfranchised. Uh, it's a story about the socially trampled, about the ignored, about the unacknowledged. Um, brought to us through the insightful and empathic words of Steve Ducey um, from Fox News. <clears throat> May as well be the Archangel Gabriel himself, right? I, you know, like, as far as I'm concerned, this man is is the Vox Populi uh, personified. He is the voice of the people. Um, and it, my heart breaks um, when I, I, I read about this. Um, you, in an interview um, <clears throat> uh, uh, recently with uh, Penny Nance, and if you're asking yourself, who's Penny Nance? You're probably in a good place um, emotionally, um, <laughs> intellectually. So don't fraught. I'll tell you. <coughs> she is the chief executive officer of a Christian group, Concerned Women for America. Um, and what are they I, concerned about? I just, just in uh, general. The Americanism oh. <laughs> of it all about, uh, you know, because America means the United States of America and not like North America or Central America or South America. No, no, America. Oh. I do like the idea of a women's Christian group because the New Testament says that women aren't allowed to have positions of power. So that's just fun to me. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, Austin, you know, everybody knows that the Bible isn't. <laughs> supposed to be taken literally, except the parts that I tell you are supposed to be taken literally. Anyway, story, Johnny? Story is, is that, that in this interview that Mr. Ducey had with Ms. Nance, um, he expressed uh, um, a little bit of disdain uh, from Hollywood uh, port- portrayals of men, very specifically referring to um, the animated um, runaway train hit and um, radio tyrant, um, Frozen. Disney where, Frozen or the horror movie about people trapped in a ski lift? Um, I'm, ima- I'm imagining it's probably the, the former. The other, uh, the other one was really good too, but whatever. Yeah, but I'm not sure that it was a radio hit 
like, juggernaut that okay. just plowed through pop music charts and has its own um, musical on ice. If it does, let me know, because uh, I'd like to get tickets. For the, I mean, the latter. Trapped in a, a ski lift <laughs> musical on ice. I'd oh, my to... God, get to the story. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I'm just. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm now like writing the script in my head. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, um, yeah. So, so Ducey asked this question. Uh, uh, the, this this Penny Nance person about um, Frozen possibly depicting men as evil and distant and 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 cold and and incompetent. Um. <clears throat> and apparently, um, at one point in time, said that it was – and I'm going to read the actual quote here uh, because um, – uh, sorry, Nance's response was is that um, it's – the emphasis on positive female role models is empowering girls at the cost of their brother's self-respect. And Steve Ducey – Steve Ducey, bless this man, replied verbatim, it would be nice for Hollywood to have more male figures in those kind of movies as heroes. You know, that's what I've always felt. We need more men in starring roles. Nine, like, 90% is not enough. When is somebody going to speak up for men? Huh? <laughs> when is somebody going to have the courage like any one of us three men <laughs> running a podcast right now. Which one of you is going to do it? Huh? Huh? Johnny, aren't you scared? Aren't you scared of the matriarchy? Is going to come down on us? I'm, I'm like, yeah. We're going to get Switch. Maybe they're going to make us stand in a corner. Um, like, um, my voice is, is currently being robbed from me. Where are the flamboyant musicals <laughs> that... that are Fox News approved that it star all men in nicely fitting shirts with elaborate dance numbers and glittery gowns and Are there are there super manly musicals out there? Is there like a big Broadway thing called like Lumberjack Balls or something? <laughs> I would Google that, but I'm afraid. Um, it's funny, though, because I mean, we laugh at this for being ridiculous and completely tone deaf, but imagine the kind of world you have to live in where you look out over the pop culture landscape and you, as especially a straight white man, feel threatened. Yeah, like, it's, it, it, it's, the weird thing is, and I, I always hear this a lot from, like, the, either the, the majority or from, you know, a, a, uh, group that's in power, always feeling like it's always like I always hear this from various uh, things, and and I'm you know I'm just gonna go sort of broad here. I always hear uh, Christian groups in America saying my religion is under attack. It's like you're most, you're most of you. What, what what more do you want? Do you want all of it? And and I mean, again, I'm I'm not uh, like I'm trying not to paint with a, a wide brush here. I'm just saying that these really intense uh, far-right uh, Christian groups say things like that. And it also comes up with uh, with men's groups. They always, you know, men have, like, frankly, sort of, like, systemic unfair advantages in our society. And the second that thing, they lose the tiniest bit of ground, just towards equality, not, like, losing ground, just things are getting a little bit better for the world, they think that they've lost. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting. If you do look, look, look into the history of like the debates and stuff on like, you know, slavery or like um, women's suffrage, you'll find a lot of like really interesting propaganda. we like letting women vote. will will destroy the entire country overnight or like giving black people freedom. will all be, you know, white slavery the next day. It's like, there is no space between completely dominating and, and, you know, being dominated. Those are the only two existence, like, the people in power can understand. Wait, we're not white slaves right now? <laughs> Do you guys feel like that? Maybe economically, guys. <laughs> there's, there's the real injustice. But oh. no, <laughs> not gender and uh, race for us. Sorry. Yeah, it's basically, um, I mean, to, to sum it up, it's just horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, cut to the quick. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it is. 
But it also it just shows just an incredible amount of either either ignorance or very intentional fear mongering, or maybe mm. both. Yeah, I actually have trouble believing a lot of the stuff. Like, you know, I mean, we're we're liberally, so I mean, we hear a lot of goofy ass shit that Fox says, and you know, we we parade it around. But I don't even know if they believe a lot of the things they say. Like, I saw um, Bill O'Reilly was on the Daily Show, and they were talking about white privilege, and he like agreed that of all the all the points that John made, but then just said it didn't exist. He's like, white privilege doesn't exist, but yes, white people have an unfair advantage. So it's like he. He gets the ideas. I feel like he just says the things he says because the racists who watch that network pay his bills. I don't know. Pander, pandering is a thing. I, mean, I guess. God, God forbid that in this day and age when we have news networks that have broadcasting around the clock far quicker and far more frequent than anything actually resembling news occurs, that they have to turn what they broadcast into some form of ego stroking or entertainment or some form of reassurance that, don't worry, we are protecting you. We are protecting you from the horrible feminists that are coming to take away <clears throat> your superiority and, and replace it with a slightly more equal footing upon which to reasonably interact with each other and expect fair treatment. <laughs> have, have any of you guys seen Anchorman 2? I have not. It's, like, the least funny movie I've ever seen. Like I, 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 I walked by a building that had a movie poster of it on it, and I feel like that qualifies me to say yes yes i have like i guys i've sat through the worst movies in history but i could not make it through anchorman 2 but the reason i bring it up is there's actually like the one part i liked of it was when they were doing news like it's set in like the 70s and they're like why don't instead of telling people what they need to hear we just tell them what they want to hear and it's like they invented like shitty 24 hour news journalism so they like basically do like the fox news thing where they just like you know just say whatever because it makes people feel like they're being entertained and not informed. And um that's I guess that's low hanging fruit, but it's it feels relevant and it's the only redeeming part of that movie. Christ. Wow. So I, I feel like when uh debates like this pop up, um you can sort of explain something to someone in uh logical terms and they might agree with your point, but terminology somehow gets screwed up. Like you can say you can say to someone well, you know, just historically speaking, white people have had an unfair advantage in this country, and although things are getting better, there's still a, a, there's still a, a part of that that's part of this country. And a reasonable person would say, well, yeah, I guess that's true. So he said, well, that's what white privilege is. And then he says, I'm not white privilege. That's yeah. not true. Because they, get, they, they think that they're, they're, you're being attacked and being called a racist just because you – you benefit from it. I mean, fr frankly, you know, I'm a I'm almost completely white guy, and <laughs> I'm an almost completely white guy, and I, without with whether I do anything about it or not, I am benefiting from the actions of of well, bad people, and mm -hmm. and, and it sucks. But it's not a failing of yours. It's nothing to be ashamed of, or right. you know, feel guilty. It's just the way the world is. Yeah, right. I I tell my girlfriend all the time. You know, I love being white. It's yeah, it's pretty good, guys. Honestly, like I I like I I appreciate it. Don't think that I don't, and I'm not gonna feel guilty about it because it's not something that I can control, but it's something I can do conscientiously. I, I will tell you something that I do feel bad about. I do like I mean this whole concept that, that that Leon just brought up about the concept of how people shut down immediately when they even catch a whiff that you might be indicating that that there's something racist going on. That that bothers me is that like and and I recognize it growing up that in in the 1980s it was like it was drilled into me. You know, it was, like, almost conditioned that it was, like, racism was one of the worst things that you could do, that mm -hmm. sexism was terrible, that these are horrible things. And that the moment that you betrayed yourself as having a racist impulse or having a sexist impulse, fuck, that's it. You, it was over. You were a pariah, you know, and it, it, it seems ridiculous these days that that those terms – that saying things like, whoa, that's a little racist, you know, um, 
shuts conversation down. Yeah, it, it, instead of encourages it. Like we need to we need to be able to say like, "Whoa, hey, okay, that was a bit racist." We need to be able to instead of going, "No, I'm not racist, so I'm just going to dig a trench right here and I'm going to stay where I am until you tell me that I'm not racist." I I think what uh some people I, I'm sorry to sound like I'm being condescending, but I'm, I'm not just going to say it anyway. I think what some people need to realize is that racism isn't just the KKK. It's not, it's, it's, when someone says, you know, this thing that you're talking about is racist, you're not necessarily saying someone is the furthest extreme of that. You're not calling someone like a Klansman or a Nazi if they say something that comes across as insensitive. You're more, just, over, more over than that, you know, like if you say something a little bit racist, that doesn't necessarily make you a rapist, a racist. <laughs> that either. It doesn't make you a rapist either. It doesn't make you a rapist either. Although, although I will say that if you're a rapist <laughs> even once, you're a rapist forever. Yeah, you I, pretty much are. Yeah. There, there's I mean, no. Coming, I'm sorry. There's no coming back from that. And, but, and if you're also a racist, just <laughs> just, just stop. Too. Just, just to put it, just uh, to top the cherry, uh, yeah, you're also a racist. But, no, uh, no. I mean, but that, that insensitivity, it's like, you know, you can say things that you might not necessarily know are prejudiced or racist or, or sexist or insensitive or anything like that. And it can be like, hey, that's an insensitive thing to say. And it's also, I think it's okay, I think this is, especially because me and Johnny are working in like a media criticism area, we kind of encounter this a lot. It's all right to enjoy and engage with uh, problematic media. Like, we talk about racism and sexism stuff. Like, everyone gets all bent out of shape any time Bayonetta gets sprung up. They're like, I like it, so it's not sexist. It's like, it can be both. It can be a little sexist and really fun and enjoyable. Like, that's that's okay to have those two thoughts at the same time. Yeah. You know, you, you're allowed you to have you're allowed to have conflicting emotions about things. Just because I agree with something that Bill Maher said once, doesn't mean I'm like Bill Maher's right about everything, because he's ridiculously stupid about a lot of things. I have those conflicting feelings about the show drawn together. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not it's not as uh, intense as uh, having conflicting feelings about politics, but uh, that show uh, makes me uncomfortable. But I could not stop laughing. So yeah, it's okay. It's okay to like things that have problems, guys. It doesn't make you a bad person. We just ask that if you want to engage in them, that you be open and realistic. Also, Leon, when you were talking about like language cutting down, uh, shutting down conversations, I wanted to bring up one thing that always bothers me because I, I mean, I've talked about like women's stuff on the internet before. One term that always rankles people is rape culture. Yeah. Like everyone can, everyone can admit they're like, oh yeah, like we treat rape victims really bad. Oh man, we have this, you know, campus rape problem. We have this and that, and they're like, yeah, we live in a rape culture. Like, whoa, I don't support a rape culture. I'm not a racist. How can I live in that? Like, that 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 term freaks people out, and I, it's almost at a point like, like we need a new one because yeah. just, no progress can be made there. Yeah, the thing is when you mention that. And it's it's largely true. We, we you know the fact is we treat victims really poorly. And I don't when I say but the thing is when I say we, oh yeah prove it. <laughs> the thing is when, when I say we and when this brought is brought up and someone says we, we're not just saying necessarily the people who are in the room. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the important thing when someone says there is a, a very unfortunate part of our society that treats rape victims poorly that basically teaches men sometimes bad values from a young age that fester in them. When someone says something like that, it makes sense. And if someone says, yes, well, that's the term we use for that is called rape culture. And then people freak out because they think that encompasses them. Like they are, that means they are definitely rapists and they definitely. <laughs> Congratulations. Have... Welcome to the rape culture. You just turned 18. Here's your membership card. You're going to get a monthly newsletter. And if you have any questions, just dial Todd. He knows what's going down. <laughs> no, no, the, what I'm trying to say is that when someone says rape culture, that's the terminology we use to discuss the things we were just talking about in the past two minutes. It doesn't mean that you're a rapist, and it doesn't even necessarily, necessarily mean that you have negative feelings about women or poor values as it pertains to women. It or just ridiculously means... ridiculously enough that you support rape. Right. It, it just means that there is an unfortunate, pervading attitude 
in a large part of our society that basically treats women poorly, that frankly uh, treats the victim uh, treats the victims as suspicious. And that's what when someone says that's what rape culture means, that's what rape culture means. It doesn't it doesn't mean they're not pointing a finger at you and says you have raped like so many people. <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't have to point that out though. Shouldn't that be obvious? It like, should be, but but people just there's it's a it's a it's an emotional response more than it is a logical response. But to tie this back into Frozen, we can't, but <laughs> um, <laughs> No, it's just, I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous that, like, it can be easily dismissed. Like, there are bad men in Frozen, and there are dumb men, but it, it's, I don't think it's part of any larger trend, obviously. There are strong, powerful, like, kind, honest men in Hollywood pictures, and it's, it's kind like of... Like Liam Neeson! <laughs> just stop fucking with him. Stop stealing his family. Even Disney specifically, there are tons of good guys in your Disney movies, and the second that Disney makes something that people, you know, kind of uh, say, you know, this is like one of Disney's more feminist pictures, you know, that has this strong female characters. And then it's like they've been, for, for men, what does that mean? It's like that's encroaching on your territory, that there happens to be good portrayals of women in a Disney movie and not as damsels in distress. I mean, do, do does every movie need to be Aladdin? Do, do we all, does everyone have to be Aladdin? I don't know. I mean, Aladdin's pretty good. Uh, that's one of my. That's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, disagree if every movie was Aladdin. <laughs> I, might, I might disagree just a little bit because I'm having real trouble imagining now David Lynch or like Darren Aronofsky directing their versions of Aladdin. Oh my God! I would want to see that. I mean, so I much. like. I do. I do want to see that, but then at the same time, I'd kind of be like. I, I get the feeling like this should be something else. How cool would that be if you could get a bunch of different directors with really distinct styles to make their own versions of one, like, story? Oh, man. I want to see that. That's cool. Yeah. That's a cool yeah. idea. That would be neat. Fuck, what? Ah, uh, Christ. Ah, damn it. I can't remember their names. Okay. <laughs> And we can't talk about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're they're a couple of stop motion animators. They're twin brothers. Um, oh God. Um, oh, the brothers Key. There, there we go. The brothers Key. Uh, if you guys have ever seen the music video to um, that Tool song that everybody knows, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a pretty big Tool fan. You're gonna have to narrow that down. All right. Okay. I'm gonna edit that so it sounds like also says I'm a pretty big Tool. <laughs> <laughs> you no, better, I'll be I'm, mad. I'm not. Um, anyway. Is... We believe you, Johnny. No, you... no, no, Sober. Yes. Sober. Uh, the music video for Sober. All of that stuff was, in, was inspired by the Brothers Key. Their shit is so fucked up. <laughs> no, like, you don't even, you, oh, man. I wish I could, I wish I could, um... I, like I wish I could sit you guys down and watch like some some brothers key stuff right now. You can see the entire there's there's a, a 20 minute animated film they have called Street of Crocodiles that you can see on YouTube. I know Johnny, that. I, yeah. Speaking of music, there's a new Modest Mouse album next month, and this is the only thing I want to talk about now. We have 10 minutes. Okay. Have you guys heard the new singles from the new Modest Mouse album? Yeah, Coyotes and Lampshades on Fire. I couldn't stop listening to the, the Lampshades on Fire for like a month. So fucking good. I've been, it's been a, there's been like a pirated version of it on the internet for like two years, and I'm still excited about the studio cut. Yeah, I. Oh, oh, oh. Leon, but Leon Modest Mouse. Okay, I just been listening to the Frozen soundtrack for the past year or so, but what, whatever. <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> Frozen isn't good. <laughs> you're you're not good. <laughs> it helps. I've also been listening to the Tango song. Oh gosh! So whenever Johnny puts something in the chat, I'm immediately like afraid. Okay, no, I'll watch. That's just that's just the Brothers Key Street of Crocodiles. You should watch that. They like, I they have such a limited work. Like their 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 oove, their CV, their um uh, whatever you want to call it is is really really small. But holy shit! 
some of the most chilling stuff, just like amazing stop motion. And I would, I would fucking love to see them and David Lynch and Darren Aronofsky and I don't know, like maybe David Fincher, fucking um, Christ, yeah. <laughs> so years ago, years ago, it was a dream of mine to have a bunch of like, like old school weird ass musicians uh, cover pop songs. <laughs> Like I would, I would, I was like, I had a list of everything. It was like I wanted to hear Tom Waits sing Justin Timberlake's "Cry Me a River." <clears throat> it, and it, it, Tori you Amos sing like wrote fan "Be Got Back" or something like that. You know, like it was, it was just like I don't know. But yeah, this is quite like that, and I'd like to see that. Have you guys been playing any video games? We have five minutes. Uh, I, I finished Wasteland too. Oh, oh! Did you kill yourself? I, mean, I did, did not. You, did you kill the character named Johnny Malone? I did not. I oh. did not. Because yeah. I gave myself a diamond-encrusted shovel. So you did meet Johnny Maloney. I met Johnny Maloney. Johnny Maloney and Johnny Maloney had a conversation. It was uh, enriching. <laughs> Leon? I, I, I've been playing Tales of Graces F because that's what I'm doing now. Do, do you um, ship Asbel and Sharia? No. no, no, no. God, I, I, I don't know why, but I don't care about their <laughs> their romance at all. That's all that the F chapter is, though. It, 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 I know, and it's so weird too, because in the fir- in the main game, it's always like like they care about each other, and Sherry obviously has the hots for him. But Asbel is like, whatever, I have other shit to do, and then like a minute into the the expansion. Um, his mom says, you need to get married. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm like 18. And then, <laughs> and then in the second he meets Sherry, he like flips out and starts sweating through, through his suit. And it's like, wait a minute, you developed this crush very quickly and from afar. What, I mean, I guess the, the idea was. He went through puberty during the end credits yeah. right, from the from the main game. Yeah, he had a very late puberty. Either that or um... it's weird. The exact same thing happened to me. <laughs> I think I think I was playing Final Fantasy four, and uh, yeah, puberty end credits. It was just like boom. That, that's great. Uh, <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for that, Tony. Um, so no, um, what happened is is I think. They like tease the relationship in the in the main part of the game, and then I guess the writers were like, you know, the fans probably want to see some kind of resolution to this, so they just like fast tracked it. I um, think maybe because they were worried about people shipping Asbel with Sophie, who's like a weird. Well, it's kind of spoilers to say what she is, but it's not good that she he should not bang her. You guys are talking some alien shit. <laughs> I don't actually, even know actually, on, Johnny, anyway. fucking spoilers, dog. Yeah. She's she's like a, she's like an alien robot thing, um, who like never ages, so she always looks like she's fourteen, which is weird. Don't. Okay, all right, she looks like she's fourteen. I was just about to say, don't tell me that if you came face to face with an alien robot that you wouldn't try to bang it. But if it looks fourteen, I'm yeah, gonna, I feel it's, a little skeez. It's eternally prepubescent. It's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it, it, even if she turns in, she's like a hundred years old in like the second expansion, she's still just a kid, and it's weird. So yeah, I, that 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 was one of the things that weirded me out about the end of uh, um, "Let the Right One In." I was like, "Where's this gonna go?" Because that's <laughs> gonna be weird. <laughs> yeah, but that, I mean, on that in that particular instance, they're supposed to be fucked up characters. I thought, right. Is that just me, Johnny? Yeah, well, oh no, 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 no! It's uh, it's it's pretty fucked up. Which, if you haven't seen it, listeners, let the right one in. Check it out. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bother with the American one. Let let me in or whatever I, it is. I haven't seen that one. I I, I did I did not appreciate it as much as the original. But you know, I mean, maybe I'm just taking a liking to the first time I saw it. So you might like it. Whatever. I heard it got good reviews, but I already saw the story, so I'm good. Yeah, I felt the same way about um, Dragon Tattoo, even though Fincher is my favorite director. I was like, I don't need to see this again. Really? David Fincher's your favorite director? Yeah, pretty much. What, what did you think of Panic Room? Oh, it's, it's fine. I like not, Panic Room. I saw that in the theater. Seven or Fight Club, but... No, I, you know... I good. saw that in the theater, and uh, Jared Leto had um, cornrows. Uh, <laughs> so there was that. That's what I remember about it. I remember, like, yeah, this is really tense. And uh, Jordan Catalano from My So-Called Life has cornrows in this movie. 
Because mm-hmm. that's how I thought of him at the time. <laughs> you guys? I, I don't care for Panic Room. Did you guys see the interview? I did. Yeah, I thought it was pretty not, funny. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. It's on Netflix. I watched it. it I know. I, I'm going to watch it out of principle. It's not good, but it made me laugh, and like, whatever, that's fine enough. <laughs> it's, it's not, I, I, I wouldn't say it's not good. I just don't think that it was even one of the best comedies last year. I think uh, the material was weak. I just think that the, the leads are charismatic, and they carry it through force of personality. But yeah. do you think it's going to topple the regime of North Korea? Because obviously that was what was on Kim Jong-un's mind all this time. But if if it, that's all it takes, then it wasn't being held up by much. Oh, I have a story. I I don't I don't know if I should, can even share this, but um, I'm gonna tell but it anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. I don't care. Peer pressure. Uh, peer pressure. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm. Going... You can't be one of the cool kids unless you tell us, Leon. Okay. Now I... smoke this cigarette. <laughs> John Johns Hopkins University, um, is having a uh, convention, and I am their guest of honor. Um, oddly enough. And that's neat in and of itself. Um, but usually when a convention has me on panels and stuff, they just kind of email me and say, yeah, you can you know, do this. And I'm like, okay, are you going to comp my ticket? And half the time they say no, and that's it. And that's usually the extent of it. But um, the people uh, that work for the university, like, brought me in for, like, meetings and stuff and, like, showed me around and um, what was what was, I, the, this came to mind because you said um, the interview uh, is made strong just for the full force of their personalities. That term actually came up in the meeting. Someone said, um, "So we're going to give you an hour to talk about <laughs> to talk about what you're going to talk about." And I said, "Look, the full force of my personality is not enough to sustain a room for a full hour. I'll give you 45 minutes. And they're like, okay. We can learn to juggle by then. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do some acting classes. Uh, Rogue Legacy is free on PlayStation Plus right now on PS4. It's super good. You should get it. I can't stop playing it. What is that? Rogue Legacy. Okay. Super good game. It's a side-scrolling roguelike uh, where every time your character dies, they have, like, a kid that inherits some of, like, the the previous character's traits. It's this weird, like, genealogical... It's neat. It's a it's a neat little game. Okay. With some, um, with some cool twists. I, I, before we go, I think I'd just like to take this moment uh, to ask for a moment of silence for the death of Cucumber Water. What? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm afraid that, that Cucumber Water, as of uh, February 4th, uh, has passed away in the cultural zeitgeist, now completely replaced by coconut water. <clears throat> and, uh, I don't know what we're talking about right now. <laughs> you guys don't know cucumber water? I assume it's water from cucumbers? No, I mean, it's like water that people put cucumbers in because oh. it doesn't flavor the water so much, but it's, like, healthier, and, like, cucumbers naturally remove toxins, and <laughs> that's, like... Cool. The whitest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's it's fucking... It, cucumber water was the biggest fucking scam that anybody had ever tried to fucking perpetrate on, um, <clears throat> yeah, white people, basically. I, I guess no one ever tried to do that on me, so this but is now, all, like, new. You obviously don't know enough white people, Leon. You need more diversity in your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, who will speak for the white people? <laughs>